Hello and welcome to Regular Features, episode number. Actually, I think this one's this one's all yours, Steve. Episode one hundred and thirty-three. Perfect. Disappointing. One hundred and thirty-three. That's hey. more like it, Steve. Come on, man. Back on form with the <laughs> racist. Never forget where you came from, <laughs> and never forget to keep kicking it as uh-huh. you run away. Forever kicking Ireland. How can you kick something when you're running away from it unless you're using it as a basis well, to propel yourself do. away that's from it? That's what people it. do in horror films. They you don't know, do it well. Oh, right? like, they get caught and they die. Oh, you're lying on your back and kicking in the face of it yeah. as it grabs for your leg. Yeah, fair yeah, play. That's, fair that's play. what I meant. That's the United Kingdom looks a little bit like a big witch kicking a teddy bear, which is Ireland. Oh, it's yeah. Wales in that. It's pregnant tummy. The Wales is the, is the witch's wing. <laughs> Witches have wings. <laughs> God, I'm going to argue with you. Isn't it? I didn't know witches have wings. Yeah. How do they fly? Uh, broomsticks, Steve. Oh. Ay, 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 party time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. No. <laughs> Which one of you has got some features? All right, so guys, I've got a, I've got a feature here. i got a feature, right? Listen, don't judge me on this, but i got a feature. There was a thing that happened to me a little while ago. Not that long ago. Mm. You know how you go on Doctor Internet? You know Doctor Internet is a thing. Is that mm. like WebMD for the Web for MD. the UK generation? I call Doctor Internet basically any time at which you feel like unwell and you decide to use the internet to try and work out why. Yeah. It always, always means that you have cancer. That yeah. is consistently how it works. Now, Gav did this in a previous feature. He, he, uh, he diagnosed himself using the internet. Mm-hmm. And we, we came under some fire recently for allowing Joe Scrabbles to bring a Ouija board into the regular features. Well, I'm going to stop you there, Steve, because don't worry, this is not a duplicate feature. I was going to say, we were going to have to take that to feature arbitration, Mm. where where you need to outline the distinguishing features of this feature. And Joe's Ouija board feature, it it was a different feature because it was a different ghost. It It was was Rod. Rod the ghost. It was a and that's an ghost. entirely different ghost to the one that was summoned. He's from a different school of ghosts. Yeah. So it's very different indeed. But this is not this is not a feature about that. This is just about the fact that I had an interesting thing and the fact that I had a different version of Doctor Internet. In that I was streaming an online game all day for charity and lots of people were watching me all day. So it was like a twelve hour thing, so people were watching me all day. And what happened was lots of people were then like watching my behaviour. And lots of people started to notice that I was going to the toilet an awful lot. And I was thirsty an awful lot. And lots of people who'd had the same thing started saying in the chat, I think you've got diabetes. Everyone said, I think you've got type 2 diabetes. And you it was are just, a massive fat fuck. Mm. I've, I know, right? I've, got, I've really piled it on lately. I've uh, always got a handful of Colin Caterpillars on the go. <laughs> <laughs> Usually in a pocket of mine. <laughs> That's that brilliant. A I've never used Colin Caterpillar as a reference. It's always been Percy Pig with me. I'm going to upgrade to Colin Caterpillar. <laughs> Hang on a minute. And I want a whimsical sweet to say. Hang on a minute. Isn't Colin Caterpillar the cake? Or is... It's not. No? That's definitely, definitely not. Because I like the Caterpillar cakes they do at Marks and Spencers. Because everyone else is always like, oh, I won't eat the face. I'll, I'll eat the fucking face. I'll eat the face first. <laughs> and then, I'll, then I'll eat the arse. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll leave the middle. You I'll, know, I'll, I'll know the best bits. <laughs> I'll eat the arse while putting my finger over the lips on the face. <laughs> That's a log promise. <laughs> yeah, so I was this interesting thing of it wasn't me looking for anything, but then my symptoms were being presented. People were watching me, effectively having 500 people watching you as if you're a test subject all day. And so many people saying to me, Matt, I think you've got, I think you've got diabetes. I think you've got diabetes. Just because I kept needing to go to the toilet. I was having all sorts of problems with my bladder. And uh, this came to a head uh, a little while later. Oh. I'm not sure if I ever <laughs> talked about this um, on the podcast before, but a long time ago, I wrote a little blog thing about piss tips. Have I ever talked about piss tips? And about the yeah. uh, technique for stopping yourself from pissing yourself? It's really good, right? Basically, what you do is you, you've got to try and get home as quickly as possible, obviously, but mm-hmm. your brain is really clever and it knows when you're almost home. And so what it yeah. starts to do is you start yes. to feel it like More really urgent. coming out. As you're putting the key in the door, yes. you almost piss yourself. Your brain is ab- Absolutely stupid in that. It, it doesn't it get all the goals are all wrong. Yeah, absolutely. But it, it does, and it's like you've been holding it for like an hour, and then suddenly, within thirty seconds, it's going. It's time to come now. It's time to come, and you're like, no, it isn't. No piss, not come. 
Oh no, yeah, but but come out, you know, it's just oh. other things can come out of your body. No, it's not just cast. Yeah, you know, Some of us don't spunk constantly. <laughs> you don't say. Uh, uh, you don't say time oh, to Steve, come. Mate. It's <laughs> time to come. Yeah, but I wouldn't say that. But my body might. Okay, that's right. Saying it's time for the piss to come now, Matt. <laughs> Talking to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I worked out you can trick your brain with this. My little piss tip. It does work. When you're walking down the road towards your house, instead of looking at your door, just, just look off to the distance. Find like as far away as you possibly can and think of a place that you've been to, which is like a good five, ten minute walk away from where you are. And start just telling yourself, no, no, we're going there. We're going there. We're not going here. Oh. We're going there. Oh, so... Is it when you see your house, you start imagining like the toilet so. bowl and the sort of the lid lifting, and there's a beautiful glow from inside it? And yeah. yeah, and a beckoning finger. You go, I oh, hope that doesn't try to finger me if I have a sit down. We piss all over that that imaginary hand. Um, but yeah, it must be that <laughs> because you, you you can trick it by going. Actually, no, we're not stopping here. And you just go, no, no, we're not stopping here. We're actually going to go over there. No, I know my house there, but actually we've got to go all the way down there. And it does, it, you can feel it, because it is a you know a physical thing. You can feel it subsiding immediately. You're probably going, oh, oh, oh I actually know we've got ages to go for you just say out loud, oh, oh I, I wish I hadn't bought this train ticket to Scarborough. Yeah. It's going to be seven hours before I see another toilet oh. as you reverse into your house. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> your body would probably bust at that point and think, well, fuck it, I've got no chance of just <laughs> shit, piss and puke and everything. You just bust <laughs> Coming and pissing and shitting <laughs> every angle. <laughs> it is like trick, trying to trick a velociraptor in a way of like you can get away with it for a little bit, but eventually they'll they'll smarten up and go, hang on a fucking minute. Because it does tend to be that as soon as you, it's all right for walking around the corners of your house, but then as soon as you start putting keys in doors, it's like you can you can start saying to yourself, no, I'm just popping in for a second. Then I, we've got to immediately go over it. But mm. your brain starts to wise up and going, hang on a fucking minute. And it, it well, does. Why don't you just go through the letterbox then? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, so once you're indoor, that once you're indoor of the house, mm-hmm. how well can you trick yourself on the run from the front door to the toilet, or is that just? Oh, you can pinch or, at that stage, can't you? That bit, yeah, is <laughs> kind of like you've got to be. That's the danger zone, but you've you've got through the worst of it now. I'm talking like this is this is really useful in like really bad circumstances where like you've needed a piss for such a long time. But um, recently I had a I, I was sort of I was let down by my own piss tips, uh, and I was in a situation where I. I had a plan I was going to go to, this was just after people had said to me you know oh, you know, you, you, we think you might have diabetes and I had had a very shortness of bladder I felt like I really needed the toilet all the time quite badly and uh, yeah I, I, I was like I'll go to the toilet at McDonald's near my house but then McDonald's near my house was closed for renovation and I did that British thing of feeling a bit too like I didn't feel comfortable in the day to like try and go into a cafe or a pub and use their toilet without buying anything and I wasn't that far from home so I just I'll just rush home. I, I went to a new level of of trying to stop yourself from from pissing yourself that I've never achieved before. Because you know how the final stage of not pissing yourself is very gently just sort of like hopping on the spot a little bit. Mm. You know, you start to like hop on the spot back and forth a little bit, just a bit of movement, yeah. bit of movement. I no, it's just... fumbling at a pair of pants that you'd forgotten didn't have a, a, a little hope in the front. So you've started pissing. You're at the last stage, so all the valves, all your oh. psychological valves are off. And you just end up pissing on your finger just as you hook it out. Oh, oh no, that's that's, that's yeah. it's a whip like Strider's sword. Oh, striking in front the of wall. you <laughs> <laughs> into and a hedge and onto a woman and into a bush and a bus stop. That was poetry. <laughs> that was. <laughs> but I haven't told anybody this. But yeah, no. Uh, about three weeks ago, I did piss myself. <sighs> that's the first time I pissed myself in a long. Long time. It I can't happens. remember the last time I pissed myself. It happens. But it was so it was so desperate. It was that thing of trying to open the door to my house whilst physically jumping up and down as hard as I could jump up and down. Mm. But surely just inside hang the on. flat. Jumping surely stamping on the floor isn't a good way to stop yourself pissing. I'm sure it isn't. You wouldn't be fined a penny for pissing yourself in the middle of the street if you had slipped the bell end out of your fly and the piss went onto the floor, eighty pound fine. <sighs> How about that? What Save yourself some money. <laughs> yeah, just piss into your own jeans. Within two days, you'll have saved over a thousand pounds. Well, how much? And can afford that new computer you've had your eye on. A pair of jeans <laughs> set you back forty-five, fifty quid. It means every week no. I can put eighty pounds into a jar, which I would have spent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and before I know it, I can then spend that to buy uh, 
16 packs of cigarettes. It's a money making plan <laughs> you can from jam regular features. You, that you can use as penis tampons if you need to <laughs> just, just, just simply slip a filtered cigarette into your urethra and piss at will. Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle, piss at will. <laughs> don't, don't, will. Don't, don't, yeah. piss, don't piss on your uncle. <laughs> your <laughs> uncle's <laughs> husband. <laughs> yeah. well, I just thought a fascinatingly depressing thing about. Because uh, I think when you're. The last time I pissed myself was as a kid. And uh, I think there's there's you're a bit more used to doing it as a kid because mm. you know you used to do it loads when you're a baby and all that. So you just sort of it happens and then you kind of go, oh no, I've done that, and you sort of just freeze in like you know kind of like oh this has happened. And at that age, you don't know how the washing machine works. Yeah, but as an adult, it was very different. It was it was pure so defiance. You jam your trousers into the, the little drawer at the top. <laughs> yeah. Why won't they fit? I think the left leg goes in here and the right leg goes in there. And what do I want to get out of it? Piss. So you open the front door and just piss into the drum. <laughs> so it knows. Yeah, that's it. Remove this. Type remove this onto the panel. <laughs> piss. Activated. Uh, yeah, but it's just it was just the pure... It felt like there was a there was a real moment of of, of human beast like purity to it because it was that like very defiant nature of your body just going no this is not happening. I don't think you should be ashamed at all. I think you should be proud. No, it's I just think a- it's uh, I like the feeling I'm pissing myself. It <laughs> gives me an erection. I find it sexually arousing. Thank you. But does it arouse you so much that your valve turns on to come and it stops you pissing yourself, <laughs> thus creating a frustrating cycle for you? <laughs> And I just, I thought it was hilarious that my, my last response, whilst like literally, because I was so close, I was like two feet away, with my trousers still on, was just to, just to grab my dick through my trousers, as if, as if, <laughs> as if like, that would stop it. it. Like Homer <laughs> Simpson <laughs> yeah, grabbing his son. I was thinking more like Michael Jackson. Yeah, there it was. Yeah, it was, it was like, literally just like I kind of just thought because I know that sometimes you, you know, you, as you say earlier, you can pinch it in. Like if it's if you get your hands down the trouser, you can pinch it in. Mm. But after it's just it started and you can't stop it, just to try and grab it in the hope that that will somehow stop liquid. It's this sort of like very animal thing of just being like this will help, and it's like this isn't helping at all. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't really embarrassed. I just thought it was quite amusing, and uh, I went to the doctors and. Um, Turns out I don't have diabetes. I just like just had a, just <laughs> had a really bad week in terms of like pissing myself, etc. Oh, I think we all have bad weeks in terms of pissing ourselves, etc. Hey, you shit yourself not that long ago. When? Uh, when you were eating a Magnum. Oh yeah, that was yeah that was. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you eat a Magnum, Look, I did that in the full knowledge that I was going to be telling it as a feature soon. Yeah, so did I. So did I. I kind of thought, well, I've pissed myself, but I mean, at least I can tell. Hundreds of people on the internet about it. Thousands, Matt. Thousands, yeah. I've changed my mind. Can we, uh, <laughs> can we stop this? Spooky <laughs> Mega <laughs> Features. In a forest. Hello! Yes. What happened with the uh, dude you mentioned last week with the man who left a bad review yeah. on TripAdvisor for your pube? Oh, the end of the last episode when I was so f- fuming, I just remember just shouting, fuck you, you slimy pebble-faced shit. Well, so what's happened? Well, there have been a, a number of developments. Shit. First of all, a, a number of people from the pub and a couple of regular features readers, I believe, have left positive reviews. And I must say, thank you for not leaving a four-star review thinking that that would make it more realistic, because that is a prick's trick, and I know you were thinking of doing it, Steve, but never, just, it's not, no, five stars or get the fuck out. I don't know, well, it's like, it, it, your, your pub now only has five star and one star reviews. And that that's, four star that's reviews. a polarising pub log. <laughs> <laughs> People want reality. <laughs> well, that's because I'm like Marmite. Love me, hate me. <laughs> Whatever you do, you'll have a reaction to me. I guarantee you that. Hey, welcome <laughs> to the King Billy! <laughs> that's, that's me. That's, that's my patter. <laughs> you'll either like love it. me or you go into our lactic shock. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that is all sorted out. Uh, I've now got a pub with a nice reputation on TripAdvisor, yeah. which I didn't have before. I just had mm-hmm. one... Quite bizarre review from a man who fancied himself as a writer but made no fucking sense at all. <laughs> um, but more than that, we had a, 
the birthday party last Friday, and a couple of the uh, girls who were in there were saying, oh, how did anything go with that man who was in? And I went, what, were you here last week when the man was in? The man. And they said, yeah, I was chatting to him outside. (gasps) And I was like, oh, Oh. did you find out anything about him? And boy, did they. He runs a nightclub in London called Quarry. It's a Morrissey tribute night. And anyone at his advanced years who still counts themselves a fan of Morrissey is an irredeemable shit. (laughs) (laughs) And probably... Deserves to be hounded on Facebook. I found his Facebook profile. <laughs> I don't know whether to hand the reins over to Gav on this one, or whether I want to try to be Gav for the first time I've in it's when difficult. I actually feel justified. I mean, as you found, as we found last in the previous week, episode, like, yeah. I tried to be Gav, and I didn't really have the heart for it. I wasn't focused enough. I wasn't mean enough. You were dealing with someone who you had. Oh, the only fact you knew yeah, about I that person so, is yeah. that they were called Keith. Yeah, I know. And they had an and interest in orange horses. juice and horses. <laughs> mm. That's not enough to build a real hatred. Well, I, I, I don't know. I I'm dis- not fond of orange juice. Yeah, but everyone loves a horse. <laughs> <laughs> what? Which horse? A horse? Everyone loves a horse. Every, 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 everyone has a horse. Well, no that one is knows weakness. which horse. It's kind of beautiful to think about. You know, there's a horse out there for everyone. Yeah, it's just cute. you might not have found it yet, Steve. I don't believe in the one. I'm a poly horse fucker. I'm gonna I'm just gonna go. No, I'm not. No, no. Let's get back to the story. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe um, you can use Gav as the consultant, a honey trap, uh, <laughs> consultant or honey <laughs> trap. <Consultant. laughs> There's a difference, I think. But one or the other, perfect. Or you could be the Saul Goodman to Gav's Mike Ermin trout. Okay, yes. Not some, you have been watching that recently. <laughs> I watched all seven episodes yesterday. <laughs> um, well, I think I can't do it because he knows... That I'm, it's too traceable to me. I just want to maybe employ I mean, the someone is Gav to is, take him, to take Gav him socially is quite traceable down. to you as well. Well, I, maybe. He runs a nightclub, publicly accessible. Why don't we have a regular features trip to his nightclub? And that then sounds give good. it a one-star review on TripAdvisor. No, just when just, we find out just, we don't like it, obviously. Cause just go there. Just all go there. I'll give it. Not look like we're having a good time. Ruin the atmosphere for everyone. <laughs> I think pay for actually. Give the man some money. <laughs> I'll give it. I'll give it a two-star review to legitimise the shit reviews of his nightclub. I tell you what, it'd be great. It just, that works both ways, log. What we do is we go, we go to his Morrissey <laughs> night, and then we spend the entire night going and talking to strangers and saying, "Do you know about? I'd like to talk to you about Morrissey's views on animals and China." Oh. Just, just really giving everyone a real downer going look I'm just here because I like the music of Morrissey and the Smiths yeah but I'd like to talk to you about his political views because I think we can't really appreciate his work without also being quite and then we just and we, everyone we say yeah I come every week yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I come every week I was like fuck yourself for God's sake grow up out of it it's not that good anymore is it I mean I, I liked his first solo album but I, I, mean, I don't listen to any well, of those his first three or four yeah, fair enough. I, I don't. don't I, just, I don't really like Morrissey or the Smiths. Well, to be fair, I liked him at a difficult. Uh, at my age, at each day in those earlier years when I was a teenager, he was useful for me. As you, when you were, came at that bloody age, everyone was bloody gay anyway. Yeah, just like all you had to do was whip it out. And Easy there was, for me. It was like it was like being underwater and pissing and all those fish were flying for your dick but it was hot gay men not fish <laughs> and, and they you were in a habitat in. you could breathe in <laughs> <laughs> what do you want the end goal for this man to be? well there's going to be a point to which I think oh he's actually human isn't he I wish I'd never started right, this maybe it is best to use Gav then yeah, yeah. Gav never <laughs> reaches that point <laughs> yeah. he reaches it he just bypasses it like yeah. a knife through butter so we really need to press criminal charges. His dog, maybe get his dog killed. Let's mm. stamp his dog to death. Yeah, I mean, yes. I keep bringing this up I, on on podcasts. You're right. You're right. <laughs> going to the proper channels and saying he's got a dangerous dog and getting killed by the authorities. That is just cowardly. Mm. I'm going to kneel on its rib cage. Frankly, <laughs> you can stamp on its head. Frankly, I think these days you can't trust the authorities, and if you want justice, you've got to get get your shoes on. Absolutely. Yeah. And get going. And that's what I don't just, for stomping. 
and that's just what they'll do <laughs> one of these days these boots are going to stomp a dog to death <laughs> <laughs> I really want to record that as a cover now <laughs> one of these days these boots are going to stomp a dog to death, death. <laughs> you kind of, <laughs> no one will stop me <laughs> so anyway that's that's it for now that's just an update okay. I've got, it's not a full fledged feature yet but it's going to be tune in next week for logs updates from a holding oh. cell if you're coming if you're coming to the live show maybe we can talk <laughs> Gab's away in Iceland right now, which is why he hasn't been on two podcasts in a row. Yeah, was um, it something to do with video games? Yeah. Tell you us, but yes. <laughs> um, but he'll be back next week, and then we can probably put him to work on this talent. He he will relish it. I think he's I think he's destined for that eventually commissions. You know, when all other well, like, doing... job outlets are no longer open to him because they found out what he is. <laughs> uh, you know, he will just be sort of like a private detective, the a team, bad one. The A team of online harassment. Take me to church, I worship like a dog at the shrine of your life. You can park in the burn when you sharpen your knife. Regular features. What's the feature? There was a long. What is it? Who it is? I'm excited, Steve. You were worried about this feature when you were walking up the stairs. You were swearing to yourself. You were quite intense. And I, it's, it's left me feeling a real sense of foreboding and wickedness surrounding you and your feature. Egg box? And, and, now, and now you've got an egg box. And now it's time to regular feature. How many eggs are in the box? Can I... Egg! I'm, I'm going to say, I am egg, like... Egg, 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 what? I am quite the egg man these days. Can I have a hold of your egg box and see if I can guess? Because I reckon oh. I could get it right first time. Or is that cheating? Egg. Can I, oh, hang on. Can I redistribute the eggs among the box? You can, you can. I yeah, will close I'm going to turn my bag. In then. plain sight? Oh, no, hide. Oh, oh yeah. That would be well obvious. I, yeah, I know how mystery games work. Have you never played egg you box? You cannot show, show me an egg and count it. Like any sensible not. man, I... Pluck my eggs from thine box, from from right to left. <laughs> so if Matt were to hold the box, he could maybe, by the weight of it, determine the oh. stacking of the eggs and therefore the number yeah, of eggs. Obviously, in the box. obviously yeah. Well, I'm going to distribution. distribution. Egg distribution. boxes can be used. Hot top tip: If you are a blind giant, you can use egg boxes as a form of extra large braille. Or Matthew, yes, I'm passing the box to you. Can I sing an eggy theme tune while he oh, handles it? Oh, now I know what you're swearing. One eggs. of the eggs is cracked. One of the eggs is broke. <laughs> there is a number of eggs in the box. From one How to many six. eggs are one in the six. box? Like the sides of a die. Possibilities are limited in that respect. Uh, Sorry, did you hold the box for long, long enough? enough. The box. I've had my Sorry, Steve, did I sing over a prepared egg theme tune that you had? No, that was impromptu. Ooh, impromptu! <sighs> Is that a clue? And speaking of impromptu, it's time for you <laughs> to <laughs> hold <laughs> the eggs. I've had my fun with a box of eggs, now it's time for Log to have a go. I'm holding the box of eggs in between two hands. Oh, boy. Come on, I'm giving it don't a shake Don't shake it. Shake it. Whoa, Jeez. Have you never had eggs before? No, told, what, you can feel that. There's some moisture there. One of the eggs is broken. I'm going to shake an egg. Don't shake an egg. I do what I like. Don't shake an egg. Don't shake your egg. Give me the egg. Give me the egg. Oh. Give me the egg. Oh, my egg now. <laughs> no. Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to get on limits. I'm going to hand it back now. Right, Matt said four. Four egg. I'm going to go lower than four eggs. Lower than four? I think one decoy item is not an egg. I think two eggs wow. and something that is not an egg. You you claiming there is something that is not an egg in I there. reckon it's a lube egg. A lube-filled <laughs> plastic <laughs> container designed to look like an egg. An egg filled with lubricant. And maybe that's what's broken. It would make sense. I'm going to reveal that two I'm egg. egg. It is three, three eggs. eggs. Oh, like, boy, yes. oh, yes. uh, but there's been an eggy mess. <sighs> well, that's why. Yeah, just you know, oh, three eggs. They're quite, that is a fucked up egg. I my guess of two eggs was correct, in as much as there were two intact no, eggs. No, because there are three eggs in there. Still an egg. One of the egg is just everywhere. Well, that's I really think the definition egg of egg is not is, is well, tighter than yours. Oh, anyway, that is my feature. Thank you, you very much. Eggs, you can't do much with two eggs. I'm going to... That's still edible. I know you can I'm do, but you can't it. do much with two eggs, can you? You're going to have to put them in something else, like some mushrooms. Two egg omelette. You can't have a two egg omelette. You need at least you three can. eggs. You need at least three eggs. You You just need more other ingredients to you bulk need, up the egg. You need a very tiny pan. 
The feature is over. I've got a tiny pan. I'm not small talking enough. about <laughs> eggs now. Steve, eggs are not yours. You do not own eggs. You've had your fun with eggs. Now it's time for me and Lock to not have fun about eggs. You've shown yourself unworthy as an egg owner. You bloody shattered it. Here's the jingle. I will. Regular features. Hang on. What? Oh, I need to go for a wee. Do it. Let's have another jingle. Regular features. Uh, hello. It's time for me, John Blythe, to do my feature. All right. Oh, I can't help but notice that you lot... Hang on. Hang on a minute. Can I turn myself on to, like... Get me mobile data off so my phone stops bleeding, buzzing. Don't be fooled by rocks that I got. I'm still, I'm still John Bryce from the block. Oh, oh, hey. 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 Oh, oh, oh. Any old line, any old line, any, any old line. Any old line with hammer right old iron. Oh, what's this horse doing in the lane, Jaffa? <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> one, thing I've, noticed, doing, uh, one thing I've noticed recently is that I've been laying down some cultural references that you you boys have been going. What's that log? I don't think that existed in my lifetime. Mm. That's perfectly understandable. But if I'm going to build a bridge with you and truly communicate as friends, I need you to know everything that's ever happened to me and the cultural references from which I draw my prose. But. I don't want to just lecture you. I want you to turn it into a quiz. No, <laughs> I'm going to turn it into a quiz that I want you to. Say, that seems unreasonable. <laughs> yeah. First of all, yeah. you don't know about it. Now, I want you to turn it into a Create quiz. a quiz yeah. about yeah. it. And ask me questions about it, and I'll tell you how stupid you all are. Basically, is this something I remember from my childhood? Or did I make it up to entertain and amuse you? Why do you lay trap falls for me to fall into and become... Trapped in. <laughs> because yeah. it is not without making mistakes that one might learn. That's from Batman. Yes. With with awesome questions come great answers. That's Spider-Man. <laughs> Why do we fall, Log? Because he's doing a quiz. Because that's that's quiz. the X-Men. And this <laughs> is the first question in the quiz of did it exist in my past or not? And if you do have actual knowledge of these things, because I realise that you can learn things that happened in your <laughs> yes, and mine you shared past, yeah. I'll thank you to keep it dumb until the question's over. I will tell you the name of the thing and describe you the plot of the thing. Did it happen or not? The name of the thing and, and the it, plot of the thing. The name of the thing is Digby the biggest dog in the world. <laughs> and the plot of the thing is this. A dog eats a fertiliser and increases in size far beyond the special effects capabilities of the UK film industry. Whilst trying to deny that he owns a dog, Jim Dale eats a tin of dog food in a scene that would go on to inspire the gross-out comedy genre of American Pie. In fact, if you adjusted this scene for gross-out inflation, it would involve Jim Dale putting googly eyes on his buttocks, slamming his nan's dentures into his anus, and feeding... His anus, mouth spoonfuls of custard and wallpaper paste, which of course begin to immediately leak back out of his anus. After this meal, Jim Dale minds picking his anal teeth, only to perforate his ring piece like a tea bag. Spike Milligan makes reaction faces throughout. Now I want I need you to know that that's not what actually happened in the oh, film. I know, I know. Yeah. That's adjusted for gross-out inflation over time. Yes. Because um, things are approximately 50,000% more gross than they were in the 70s. I'm aware of the Apart from existing... Racism. Well, it's more gross now that it's been driven underground and is forced not to say itself out loud, I find, Matt. I think you're right, but I think it involves less kind of like, you know, teabag anus explosions. That's, that's true. Hidden racism is less gross than stabbing an anus with a... Toothpick again and again until you've effectively destroyed. Doesn't the mean it's worse. It's just less gross. Yes, I, um, I'm aware that there exists right now a very big dog in cartoons called Big Lester. 
the massive fucking dog. I know that Big B the Big Dog is a big thing. It's a real thing. You've mentioned it before. Big B the Biggest Dog in the World is correct. It's a true thing that yeah. actually did happen in 1973. Just yes. I've and known you for so long, I don't know what these things are, but I, I've heard you it mention it. It was a terrible. There was a bit at the end with a dog in a quarry getting attacked by a plane, I think. Jesus. It just looked so like bad. King that, Kong. Yeah, it very much was a... a King Kong with an old English sheep dog quarry. sitting in a quarry. Attack it with diggers. <laughs> yeah, dig, dig underneath it. Drop Bury it. Big rocks on his head. <laughs> Bury it over the course of four years. <laughs> Just keep keep snacks there so it doesn't run away. Just for long enough for you to, to get hmm. a few rocks on it. Plan. <laughs> Question two. Maryland, the radical cat. In the 1980s, being good on a skateboard was radical, and Maryland could do all the tricks on her jet-powered skateboard that she discovered in the future. Everyone who saw Maryland was so impressed with her radical nature that they instantly became radicalised, a process which saw them skipping school lessons and meeting with Maryland in a warehouse. After a series of mentally exhausting and physically intolerable tests, the children's loyalty was proved beyond any doubt. Then, and only then, did Maryland reveal her true intentions to subvert the rule of law by reducing access to justice for the lower classes. (laughs) This, again, seems like Tory policy at the time. (laughs) I've just begun to realise I'm quite a political creature these days. (laughs) This seems to me like a creation of your own brain. I, How do you feel about I, it, Matt? I think. You I, could give the obvious answer, or you could create a false sense of I tension think, and conflict. I think that it was definitely a real thing on television in the 70s. Well, it was based on Denver the Last Dinosaur, who was a radical dinosaur named after a place in America. <laughs> but Maryland the Radical Cat did not exist. <laughs> no, the problem is now, I just think radical is now just going to be no longer about skateboards and it's just going to be fully political. Well, that's it. You, radical used to be cool. Now it's not so cool to be radical, is it? Radical yeah. dinosaur really has a problem with Christians yeah. and it's probably going to fuck up some museums. <laughs> <laughs> Question three Sammy's Super T shirt. When he steals a t-shirt from a magical factory, Sammy discovers that he can run much faster than he previously could. (laughs) He abuses these powers to unfairly improve his life, to the detriment of anyone without a magical t-shirt, before discovering that his most important achievement was actually made without the assistance of the t-shirt. This leads him to the inevitable conclusion that practice and effort are worthless, and all you actually require to succeed is an unfair head start and narcissistic self-belief. Hold on, but his best achievement was without the T-shirt. Well, the climactic achievement of the series, if it does exist. <laughs> Stop rooting for clues in the way I phrase things, Steve, <laughs> you cheating quiz bastard. No, no, he's realised his best achievement was that, but still it would level out. You'd be like, well, actually, I did achieve the most impressive thing on my own. But largely, most of my achievements were just because I had this. Well, so, I imagine he would wonder when the T-shirt had stopped working. And also, fucking privilege, Steve. Come on, I mean, like, if you're in a position where you've got a magic T-shirt, unless you'd be really good at everything, that's going to give you a bit yes. more space in they life. They should have called it Sammy's yeah. Raging Unchecked Privilege rather than Sammy's Super <laughs> T-shirt. It was a 70s log. You can't expect everything. <laughs> fucking Tories. So what? did it exist or did it not that exist? I think it did. didn't exist. What you, existed. It did exist. That is almost a... The, I don't know if the actual factory was magical, but the T-shirt certainly was. Really? It was a real thing? The Sammy Super T-shirt is the patient zero of the, that magical thing you thought was helping you. It wasn't helping you. The power was within you all along. Really? Fucking Queen's I nose is way down the genealogical tree. Or like Berners' watch. Yeah. Like, uh, those are, but you know, it sounds like, yeah, it was the Queen's watch. Even Woof. <laughs> When he did the athletics, the the uh, oh, if I'd fucking the, forgotten about the, that the dog competition, and he wasn't a dog accidentally through the oh. whole thing. <laughs> well, that didn't happen. But no, no, that was really, <laughs> yeah. you see, you have won the dog competition, and you weren't even a dog. <laughs> hey, you had it inside you the entire time. You can run through little hoops. <laughs> Question four: A sitcom called All Too Bereavable. <laughs> <laughs> this sitcom came after the successes of After Henry and Life Without George, two sitcoms about a woman who was making it on her own after the death of her husband. Jenny Agatha, Jenny Agatha starred in another sitcom about a grieving widow, but while After Henry and Life Without George charted a kind of recovery for their lead characters, in All Too Bereavable, Jenny Agatha's character was kept in a constant state of incremental mourning. Every time she showed any sign of recovery... Another of her friends will be delivered to her front door in a series of parcels. 
The show was given its sole touch of levity with Agatha's dryly delivered catchphrase, well, that really takes the Garibaldi. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Baldy being her first friend to die. <laughs> Gary, old man called Gary. Yeah. It's also a, it's, yeah, um, yeah. I there was a bit of a morbid spate of sitcoms a bit where I just maybe it was a primitive form of feminism. I don't. I know. was trying to think was, whether they were all quite morose. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I was trying to imagine if if you were to invent this all too believable <laughs> that you would cast the main character as an Asian woman. But then I thought that's too obvious. So maybe this can actually be a real thing. I like the uh, idea that all of these things uh, came about because of the meetings going, right, there's this sitcom about this 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 woman uh, living on her own. Oh, but where's her, where's her husband? Well, uh, she doesn't have a husband. What do you mean? She, she must have a husband. Like, well, um, uh, yeah, dead, he, he's dead. Dead husband sitcoms oh, he's are dead. really hot oh. right now. <laughs> there have been two dead husband sitcoms. Why don't we have one where she... Every episode ends with him finding happiness with a new husband, and then the new episode starts with him getting killed in a really grim way, like six feet under. I mean, that'd be amazing. In the funeral parlor. That was a great <laughs> sitcom. I kind of feel like the only thing that makes me think this isn't real is in the seventies. Maybe it hadn't quite like really got into the rhythm of appreciating the the value of guest stars in sitcoms at that point, like every week, in the way that Friends later did. Maybe they had them. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe were they guest stars? Like quite consistently mm. in sitcoms in the seventies. Not really guest stars, no. No, so I don't think this. You're, you had a ne- you had a next door neighbour that popped up every episode. That was it, really. Because now it'd be amazing. Like one week you'd be married to Bruce Willis, then he'd be dead. Then you could get married to yeah. David Schwimmer. I'm oh, still this friends. <laughs> 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 yeah. Gives me an idea for a reboot of the nineties sitcom starring Tia and Tamara Landry. We can call it Spinster Spinster. Oh, Spinster Spinster. Yeah. Going on like two way twister. Shaking up the family tree with, with synchronicity. Synchro- 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 oh, yeah. Sibling Sibling synchronicity. Synchro- <laughs> Such a good show. And everyone has that inherent. When you're growing up, you hope that you have a missing twin out there somewhere who would become your best friend. I never really had that, no. No, I never. <laughs> I just dreamt that I, I wished I could see whether people were gay or not by having them having a purple cloud over their head so that I could just talk to people who were like me. But I, know, it, but I knew that was never going to happen. I'd always be alone. You should probably put a purple... <laughs> put, <laughs> pretty sad. <laughs> that, was, that was my only thing I wanted as a child. Uh, well, I mean, you should have put the purple cloud over straight people's heads so that when you're having sex with your gay partners, they wouldn't have purple clouds nearby. Oh, maybe I'd have to dis- <laughs> have to learn the dispelling yeah, spell. Yeah, you, like, you, you sometimes like, accidentally breathe into it and you get a real huff of it. <laughs> uh, oh my God, it's oh, I've, got, I've got a purple cloud in my mouth. <laughs> is this well, thing real? Know. It's not real, I don't think. All Too Believable is not real, although uh, it is obviously based on sitcoms it that is awful all and were. All Too Believable? Before. Yes, I was hoping you'd be... That would seed that it was a believable sitcom by... Never mind, never yeah, mind. Let's yeah. move on. Spangles. In the old days, we used to have these sweets called Spangles. Who remembers Spangles? They were brilliant, weren't they? You used to put them in your mouth. Remember that? Putting a Spangle in your mouth. Oh, I wish I could have a Spangle right now. But the world must change. And as natural as it is to resist that change, as it ferries us into irrelevance and disability, maybe having just one Spangle to suck on right now would give me a single moment of peace. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like really Are Spangles stupid. a sweet that existed or not? I think that, I mean, I honestly, uh, 50-50, I'm like honestly straight down the middle on this one, it could be either. You choose one, and I might choose the other one. Spangles didn't exist. I think Spangles did exist. There's part of me that just thinks, it's weird, but yeah, all right. Spangles were a boiled sugar sweet that existed from the 50s to the 70s and were the subject of a comedy routine by Richard Digens. As he went on stage and had the Who's balls Richard to say, Digens? As he was the star of Abraka Digens, Steve. <laughs> Jesus. And he Christ. went on to stage and said, "Does anyone remember Spangles?" I remember that being my first experience of thinking, "This is bullshit comedy." <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Richard Digens. You can't just say, "Do you remember a sweet?" to a crowd of people and have them cheer you. But they did cheer. Mm, and it carried on, and that is now what comedy mostly Peter, is. Peter Kay's <laughs> comedy. Who remembers garlic bread? Of course you remember it. It still exists. It's, it's more popular than ever. 
It is. It's still very good with lasagna, but only if you have salad as well. Otherwise, it is just a bit too much of a carb fest. I fucking love carbs. Just blow that with butter. <laughs> oh, I want to love oh, carbs in my mouth. Carbs, Stephen. Who remembers Stephen? carbs? It's Sorry. All about. Sorry. Who remembers <laughs> carbs? <laughs> hey, this guys. Is, this is Log speaking in a documentary in 2060. <laughs> hey, carbs. Guys. Remember carbs? Who remembers complex sugars, <laughs> eh? <laughs> they magic them out of existence. When we had crops. Horses would just go down the street and give you 288 pints of beer. Did that happen? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, they would have carried the beer on their backs. And trailers, wagons, whatever they're called. It's ridiculous. And how could a horse <laughs> hand you 288 pints of beer? They don't have hands. Somebody well, they had hoofs. Somebody give you. Somebody on the horse. I didn't say hand you. Yeah. I thought it was a trick question. And horses are made out of hands. That's how you measure them. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. I thought that's it was a true. trick question. And they get shorter every time they hand you something. <laughs> that's true. It did happen. That's what dray horses were. And 288 gallons is a barrel, 36 gallons of beer. Fucking idiots. Learn a fact. Whoa, 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 I said it didn't happen. <laughs> I thought yeah. it happened as well. I just thought it was a trick question that actually a man hands at you, gives it to you, as after a horse carried it. Well, there was a horse involved, and I thought it sounded funnier if I made it imply that the horse done it, yeah. and all on his own. Is like, oh, ooh, now a big friendly car drives up to your pub, and the car hands you 700 the, pints of beer. And, and you, you go, thank you, car. And they tumble into your pub, and your <laughs> pub does a burp. And yeah. it says, bang, bang. And your pub opens up its bum. <laughs> and, and all that's, of the- that's where I put the beer, please. <laughs> so do you remember... That man who used to go house to house playing his mouth organ through your letterbox until you gave him half a crown. I can't say I do. Well, obviously we don't remember. Well, did it happen, though? Do we suspect... (laughs) This is not fair. This isn't even, like, cultural stuff anymore. This is just, like, this is just something that happened, maybe happened to you. It happened in human culture. No. What happened was a man would slide VHS cassettes through your letterbox... And, and then so, you'd leave <laughs> and you had to put your telly against the window. He <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> would shout 20 seconds before the VHS cassette would come through. No, there was no organ mouth organ playing man who would play through your letterbox until you gave him money to go away. This was the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> That's Not the actually. 60s. <laughs> <laughs> Pubs used to be full of women in massive dresses, and if you spoke to them, they would pull their massive dresses above their head and scream because they knew their place. Not like today. I mean, I think that's... I'd like to believe that's true. Just because, you know, better values, better times. It's actually the can-can, and it happened in France, not the UK. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, it did happen, and there, well, there were... It did happen. Is that... Do we win that one? No. I won that one. OK. It's fair, last question. Well, that's entirely fair. It's a fair cop, yeah. And the last question is, bananas used to be really bendy. Proper British bananas, they were. All coiled up in your palm. None of that curved shit you get today. These ones were all brown and there was a walnut on top and they were full of this lightly whipped delicious <laughs> foam. I just don't understand why I'm suddenly supposed to treat foreigners like human beings. I can't even call my dog the N-word these days. When I was a kid, we all called our dogs the N-word. Public playing fields were full of people shouting that word and you never saw black people complain. I hate it when people complain, don't you? And no, I don't see the irony in this because I never analyse my own behaviour. Did that happen or not? Mm. Or is it still happening today in a very real sense? Can we sense people confusing bananas with walnut whips? I think think that that is a problem culturally. I I don't want to bring the podcast tone down at all, but I think that is still a really big cultural issue that we need to get past. This, this, This stigma behind... Ah, uh, walnut whips. That people, there are people of a certain generation who really do believe that bananas and walnut whips are the same thing, and it's just not it's true because of Euro- European directives that make no sense. Why are you trying to les- legislate chocolate into fruit? I it know just, it never has, it never will be. Stop trying to make false things true, Europe. Vote you, kid, basically. Roger Helmer, <laughs> get on my face. Racism. Mm. Racism. Mm. Hey, 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 guys! I've got, a, I've got an idea. Jingle. And that was episode 133. Oh boy, oh boy, of the was it ever. podcast. And I am about ready to call it an evening. I'm ready to pop off my clogs and pop in another one. Guys, you know what we're doing on Saturday? I do. Oh my we are doing a live show. A freaking live show. And, I mean, if you haven't got a ticket for that already, you're definitely not coming because it's completely sold out. out sold to fuck. However, if you are coming and you haven't done so already, we talked about this on the podcast, 
Uh, we are doing 13 people dating Gavin at once. So far, only one person has bought a charity ticket for that. I've got to say, if you are coming to live show and you haven't done so, do do it because it's actually a really good deal because it's only a tenner and part of that you get a drink, so it's only a fiver. So actually, I'm giving you half of the money charity by buying you a drink. But I won't be there. It will just be Gav. Yeah, and interesting. We, but we do, we have kind of, we're asking for 13 people out of a pool of 60. 60. So we are expecting a 20. 2% take up that's a lot to ask it is but at the same time I would have thought that people who are legitimately travelling to that area of London to sp- specifically see us people would, who yeah. are already spending probably a lot of their disposable income what's another 10 of your pricks Jesus <laughs> Christ so this is this is our March 28th show at the Canal Cafe Theatre if you do in it London. I will if you do it he will. you'll get one drink for free and I will buy you another drink that's a hell of a deal that basically getting- means you're not you, all you have to do is be there an hour earlier. If you show up early time. enough, then you can you can buy into the date on the day. Yeah, sure. It's at a different pub, though, so that's... It's just down the road. It's just down the road. We'll work it out. But anyway, hopefully, we will, because at the moment, it's just usually embarrassing, because you've got Gav saying, oh, no one wants to go on the date with me. I think it's because it's, there's no chance I'll put it out, because he's got a girlfriend, personally. Mm. I've tried to talk him around, being like, maybe you could just, you know, get an arrangement with a girlfriend, you know, this doesn't really count. What happens in... Warwick Avenue stays in Warwick Avenue it's on say. tour stays on tour yeah that's the one yeah. Um, but yeah it should be great we're going to do a live show we're going to film it it's going to be on the internet and next time we do a live one you can come and watch and if it you can't one. make it then the next episode here will be that live show it will yes it will straight up and if you'd like to come to future live shows we'll tell you about them before we tell normal people about them if you patronise us by going to patreon.com slash regular features and donate however much per episode you think that what you listen to is worth. Yeah. But if you don't have any money, that's fine. Just go on iTunes and give us a five star review. Then that's that's the that's not that's not the best thing you can do. Jesus Christ, no money's the best thing. <laughs> it's also a good thing you can do. Yeah. Genuinely, fucking love you. Love you as well. Oh, I love you more beautiful. than Steve. Maybe. Fucking Patreon people are awesome. Lovely group of people, and we look forward to seeing you on Saturday if you're coming. If not in future. Because you're awesome. I've named my children after you. And thanks to Mr. Toms, who I believe you are out there, aren't you, Mr. Toms? Thanks for your good review on TripAdvisor. You're going to get a big old juicy wet one, you are. <laughs> Hot. Right. Um, bye. 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 bye.